Hello and welcome to the Mindset Mentor. I'm Tanya Kolar, helping you live your best life. Well, today's show is is really cool because we're going to focus on the mindset of an entrepreneur and what it really takes to, you know, monetize your dreams, not only to go for your dreams, but to to monetize it, right? We want to really maximize and optimize our life. And I think so many people get stuck in their tracks because they think it's so difficult and or simply they just don't know where to start. So I've got my friend and expert on the show today, Scott Briard, who is a natural born entrepreneur. He is the CEO of Stock Marketing Inc. He's also the chairman of Dorona. So he's got some incredible knowledge that he's amassed through the years. And listen, you know, like anything in life, there's some serious ups and downs, right, when it comes to being an entrepreneur. So was it always easy? No. But is it important that you take the first step and stay persistent? Absolutely. And so today we're going to show you how to do that. So let's say hello and welcome to Scott Briard. Scott. God, it is such a pleasure having you on the Mindset Mentor today. Well, Tanya, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. You know, so cool. You know, I love your journey. Um, you know, you, your entrepreneurship started quite young. You know, in your 20s, you, you, uh, you know, had a very successful retail store. So I'd love to sort of, you know, go back in time and really kind of look at the process and, and how you started that company uh, being, you know, just a young 20-year-old. Right. I, I'm going to take this even back even further if I can. I yes. think I was the youth, uh, while many were in school wishing to become pro hockey players and, and uh, you know, the successful people back then and mm -hmm. within, you know, their own education and, and abilities and, and passion and love. I stared out Arendelle Secondary School windows in Mississauga at an empty restaurant across the street thinking, wow, you know, what restaurant could I be, you know, put in there someday? And Wow. And the empty retail stores at, at South Millway Plaza, man, you know, if they only had a dry cleaner over there, that place would be so successful. <laughs> That's how I grew up. Others dreamed of, you know, hockey stardom and, mm -hmm. and being an actress or an actor, all these, I just wanted to open a business. Um, Amazing. Yeah. You and, know, I think it was just natural. Yeah, I love that because, I mean, there are, um, you know, certain things that we do, um, you know, in our childhood that is part of our dream and uh, those natural gifts and talent. So you really had the eye for that. Um, you know, I always love that um, when people have a, a big vision and, you know, they go for it. Oftentimes we can, you know, uh, get stuck in limitations and limiting beliefs that we pick up that we can't even see, um, you know, that direction. So to, to have such a big vision, I think, as a young boy is extraordinary. So I uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, your success is incredible and it's such a great, inspiring and motivating story for other people to really understand that, hey, yes, you can do it too. One of the biggest things, Scott, I think that gets in the way is that people think, hey, success is not for me. That's for somebody else. And I don't know how to do it. And so therefore they don't take any steps. But as a 20 year old, I mean, you had this great vision, but the question is, I mean, did you know how to do it? Right? Of course not. <laughs> There's a few few um, sort of ingredients to the recipe here. Let's touch on. I was born with a with a mother who told me I could do anything, so that helped immediately. Uh, I had a mother who it. believed in anything. I couldn't skate to play hockey in the winter, so I became the Ontario Youth Dart Champion because it was a skill I picked up, beat everybody else in the family, and they thought, well, let's put him in a tournament. Maybe he's pretty good at this. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I was fortunate. I had a mom who believed in me. That's key. And now being in a marriage where I have a spouse that believes in anything I dream up or come up with, it's mm -hmm. it's just as important. And we've kind of carried that on to our own son that whatever you dream you can do, begin it. Um, it's a possibility. So it's it's I think that's an important sort of source and a foundation to everything is is having that sort of belief that anything is possible. Um, you've touched on something important. There's so many people that might have a passion, a dream, a skill, a talent. But yet they hold back because of the fear of whether well, it's fear of failure. Nobody's around them to support them through it all. You're, I mean, the, the title of this podcast is key. It's all mindset and it's completely believing you can do whatever it is, whether it's, um, and it doesn't matter what your skill or talent is. You might have the next Chia pet. You might have a great recipe for the next key thing that needs to be in a restaurant. It doesn't matter what it is. Mm -hmm. If you believe in something, I mean, let's look at things. You've already won the race. You know what I mean? They're, they're the day, nine months before you were born, you already won a big race and, you know, you, you were 
you were conceived. <laughs> so there you are, you're born. I don't know, it's a hundred million, you know, swimmers are out there. You already won that. There you are, you're, you're born. You get a chance to live. Why do something 2000 hours a year that you hate or that you, you don't feel you're passionate about? If you have anything inside that you believe or dream, you can, you can do as a, to monetize, of course, obviously pay the bills with, why not take a chance at it? You know, success is possible for anybody. I love that. And you're absolutely right. Success is possible for anybody. Um, and, you know, as you were talking, I literally got the chills when you were talking about, you know, having a mom who supported you in everything that you did, having a wife who supports you in everything that you do, and then passing that on to, to your son. You know, to me, I think that is, is so key. And for anybody listening, by the way, um, right now, who hasn't had that kind of support, you can get that support by listening to the Mindset Mentor and amazing guests like Scott Briard, you can get the support by believing in yourself. And if for a moment, you know, you begin to doubt that, just remember that, hey, you absolutely can do it. And it doesn't matter what your situation is and, you know, how tough life has been. You know, you absolutely can move forward, pursue your passion and pursue your dreams. And if you have no belief in yourself, then borrow our belief in you because we know that you can do it, right? So I thank Thank you so much for sharing that, Scott. I think that's so key. And it's like, wow, you know, I think a lot of people listening would be like, wow, what is that like to actually have that kind of support? And, you know, I would be one of those people. And listen, my parents were super loving. Uh, you know, they're amazing, uh, amazing parents, but they didn't have the confidence in themselves to be able to sort of pass that on to me. And so I, I really think, wow, that's really cool. So tell us a little bit more about, you know, what that looked like and what that enabled and empowered you to do in your in your you know entrepreneurial life right so i think the, they knew that i was obviously going to own a business it's all i dreamt about it's all i ever considered doing i was 10 years old uh we spent our summers going up near guelph ontario there was a um it was called pergola mini golf restaurant driving range batting cages i dreamt that my family owned it and came up with an entire business plan. I had three brothers, three sisters, grandma and grandpa. Everybody was going to work at this place. Dad was in the kitchen, although dad was never really a great cook. Yeah. Um, mom ran the bookkeeping and, you know, I worked in the arcade, obviously, but that was my dream. What if my family could buy this place and my brothers and sisters would, you know, run the batting cages or the mini golf or, you know, waitress and waiter. And, and that I just, it's all I ever really had thought about when I had so many friends, you know, chasing a bachelor of commerce to go work in the banking industry or mm -hmm. others, you know, finding there. I just, I had, I had parents who, let's get really deep into this. It was enough that I was 25 years old, did not complete university, um, was motivated to be an entrepreneur of the years I spent in Guelph, at University of Guelph, mm -hmm. by those that owned a uh, good life fitness uh, franchise there the bars and restaurants downtown that I spent so much time at. I was around entrepreneurs all the time. A friend of mine just headed off to Southampton, Ontario and opened up a pizzeria because that's just what they did. And I was motivated by all this. And I was 25. Uh, winter was just coming. I was living in Southampton, actually working up at one of the restaurants up there that a friend had owned. Um, and I drove Lakeshore Road in Etobicoke, having mm -hmm. been a former Ontario Youth Dart Champion. I witnessed the only dart store around closing and it was there in that moment october 1999 at 25 i went if this store is closing they're going to leave a void in the industry and man if i can open up a retail store and sell pool tables and foosball tables and dart supplies man i could make this work this is what i've dreamed of uh so much so that my parents lent me the money to start my first retail store at 25. and everybody goes man you must need you know hundreds of thousands of dollars to start a business and man, the expense Twenty thousand dollars is what I borrowed, and within four years, we were doing a million a year in revenue. Wow! Oh my God, that's incredible. So that's a massive jump, and uh, you know that initial investment. And I want to talk about that for a moment because I think again, that's one of the things and the mindset that people can get sort of fixed in is that I don't have the money, I can't do it because the finances are not there. But as you did, you borrowed the money, and so mm -hmm. you know. It, and I know you know you work with a lot of companies, um, you know, that are public, and and obviously, I'm sure some of those companies, you you know, they didn't have the initial startup, but you get the investors. You look for the people who do have the money, <laughs> who can help you, right? Completely. And this is a day and age where if you look in your mailbox, I mean, every second piece of literature is either a new credit card or a line of credit or, 
it's out there. And if you believe in yourself enough, it's worth taking the risk. And I think that's what holds some, we all have friends and family who, well, if I had taken a shot at this idea I had for a business or had to bought that franchise, their, their dreams are, they've, they've given up before they've taken a chance. Mm -hmm. And it's really, I don't want to be on my deathbed wondering what if, and nobody should be at that point wondering what if I had have taken that risk. You get one shot at life. Um, truly it's, it's, it's here for the taking and some things don't work out. And it's happened to Kelly and I, we, we had a retail store that hit difficult times as an industry just was depleted. Mm -hmm. Uh, we had to make the difficult choice to close down a retail store and obviously, uh, pivot quickly as we did, uh, maneuvered into online marketing, which has taken us to another successful business, but it's really unfortunate that people hold back and don't take the risk on equity out of their house or or boring against RSP. There's so many ways. I mean, you know, don't get yourself in too much debt, but if you've got a dream, I mean, who else are you going to invest in yourself or another RRSP that's going to make a few percentage a year? Why don't build, a, build your dream and, and believe in yourself? Yeah, I mean, that's where the magic happens when you're really pursuing what you love. Um, you know, it changes your energy, it changes your vibration, it changes, you know, how you think. And, you know, I, I find that when you are doing what you love, more synchronicities start to happen and things become actually easier. So you're not, you're not met with all this resistance when you're doing something that you hate. Um, and, you know, because it wreaks ha havoc, I think, you know, in every aspect of your life, it translates into how you interact with people when you're just not happy doing what you love. Um, so, you know, listen, I get it. There's, there's responsibilities, people have to pay the bills and it's, it's a challenge, right? To sort of step out and do what you love. Um, but there's also ways to then, you know, maybe find a, a small way to do what you love, right? Start as a habit, start or like a, as a, as a passion project, do something on the side, um, that can develop and turn into, to a, a larger business. But I think it's important to, to never give up on those dreams because you talked about, you know, we're regret and oh that's such an awful feeling you know to have that and um you know it's it's you know nothing nothing truly extraordinary ever happens in a comfort zone where we just want to play it safe we you know we just want to stay with the status quo don't rock the boat but you got to take chances in life you know life is is constantly moving and you know we want to sort of shift but also um you know pivot so it was interesting that you talked about your reason retail store, you know, with your wife, Kelly, it didn't work out. You both made the decision that, hey, it's time to, you know, dissolve this. And, and you were able to pivot. And I think that that is really key. Uh, being an entrepreneur, you have to be able to sort of, you know, flow with the market, flow with what's happening and, and actually understand what's happening and, and not sort of be oblivious and put your head in the sand where, you know, could have led to even more disaster down the road, right? So what was that like for you to make that decision of, you know, you had this dream, you built this incredible business, um, you know, from that entrepreneurial mindset, and then all of a sudden it's like, hey, we got to close shop. So what's what's the deciding factor for that? How did that play out for you guys? <laughs> well, you want to save your marriage first and foremost. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. We loved what we did. We loved our uh -huh. industry. Um, we knew uh, we were one of the first online for e-commerce, which is what built our success so fast in the first four years, mm -hmm. is that we had the first e-commerce in the industry in Canada. Wow. I was shipping pool cues to Indonesia. I had sold pool tables to Dubai and, and Bermuda. And it, it turned us international out of a small retail store, a 700 square foot retail store in wow. Port Credit. Mm -hmm. Exploded. Um, but as the internet became more popular, we found we had a lot of manufacturers selling online through Amazon, through their own websites. Mm -hmm. And we, after 2008, 2009, things were difficult, obviously in the U.S. and it rippled here into Canada. Um, pool tables were the last things on anyone's mind. Um, leagues were depleting in, in members, whether it was pool leagues, dart leagues, foosball tables. Mom and dad were on their phone on Facebook and kids are playing video games back in 2010, 2012, rather than buying games for the house, um, and it just it completely changed our industry. One in three retail stores in the U.S. in the game room industry closed. Mm -hmm. uh, we knew that there was going to be no growth. Why stay in something that we can't? We could have, you know, pivoted into pool, patio furniture, barbecues, but that wasn't where our heart sat. That wasn't where our passion was. Why do something you hate again? And and you know, put in the hours we did at retail. Uh, Josh, our son, would have been six, seven at the, that stage, soccer, hockey, 
Mm. We just made the decision, let's turn this into a home-based business. Our success is based on online marketing. We know websites, we know social media, it's just booming at the time, different platforms. And the entire world needs to be on this. So let's let's pivot and maneuver. And it was a it was a roller coaster ride. Don't get me wrong. To and our identities were tied up in our retail store. It was like a first child. Um, we had to make the decision and quick. Let's get out of this and let's ramp something else up. Which took a few years to get back around. Mm-hmm. Um, not so easy when you're a married family, mortgage, child in school. Um, you know, cars and toys and fun things you build up as a business owner we made it work uh, and worked incredibly hard. It strengthened our marriage for sure. Um, but we believed in each other. We always have. Kelly and I are fortunate. We've 30 years of friendship, 19 years of marriage. Uh, you won't find a happier couple in the world than the two of us. We work together each and every day. We're yin and yang. We know what she needs to do and what I need to do to make it mm-hmm. successful. Mm-hmm. But as you're asking, we we pivoted well into something because we were doing it already for our retail store. But if we could do it for retailers and real estate agents and and yoga instructors and and car dealerships, and we maneuvered and pivoted pretty quick into a marketing agency. I love that. Such a great, inspiring story. And I I just love how you and Kelly are such a great team, uh, recognizing each other's strengths, being there for each other's, you know, weaknesses or, you know, those those um, tough times in life. Right. Um, You know, we we want to encourage and support each other. And I think when we go through challenging times, sometimes it's the people that we love that take the brunt of our, you know, discontent. Right. So I think it's so important to kind of step aside sometimes and say, hey, wait a minute. What is important in this moment? Uh, family, friends, uh, you know, honor, honoring that. And of course, you know, you, you have to look at what makes sense for your business. And, you know, that can be very challenging. And I think it's important to be able to recognize that, hey, sometimes, you know, things are meant to work out for a certain period of time. And then you have to know that here's the end. Now, I don't mean by in saying that, that you should ever give up, right? But sometimes you do need to look at how can I, how can I, you know, shift this experience? How can, how can it be better than it is right now? And, you know, I think that's a, you know, a skill too, when it comes to entrepreneurship is to, to know that, Hey, now this, we need to pivot here. Um, and again, it takes courage to, to do all that. So we're going to take a quick break here on the mindset mentor. We're going to be back with more Scott Briard sharing his entrepreneurial life and his success from, you know, being a 25 year year old uh, natural born entrepreneur, which actually started way before the age of 25. But how incredible is it to build a business at 25? I mean, I wasn't I didn't have a business at 25. I don't my goodness. So and it's it's all about the mindset and you have the mindset. Remember that your mindset is like a muscle that needs to be strengthened and conditioned. And our mind is plastic, right? Neuroplasticity, we can absolutely mold and shape and always create new neural networks. So we're going to help to strengthen your neural networks when we come back after this break here on Saga 960. Well, hello, hello, and welcome back to The Mindset Mentor. I'm Tanya Kolar, helping you strengthen and condition your mindset. So today we are talking about the entrepreneurial life, what it takes to really, you know, follow your dreams, follow your passion, but also to monetize that passion. And my special guest today is Scott Briard, who is the CEO of Stock Marketing Inc. um, And also he's the chairman of Dorona. So before we took a break, Scott was sharing his incredible story you know, building, uh, you know, his his dream business at, at the age of 25 and then, you know, changing and shifting that identity um, and obviously doing this together collectively with your your wife, who is your partner in all of this, who has been right there by your side. You support each other, which I absolutely love that because it's so important, actually, to uh, to be surrounded by people who are going to encourage your dream. Uh, I think sometimes uh, I know I've been there where I've shared my dream um, with friends and family and then it was met with are you crazy what are you thinking about how do you what makes you think you can do that and that's just like it's so deflating right so let's talk about um, you know some of the 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 tools um, that you can provide people to to stay on course to to really pursue their passion and also to recognize when sometimes their environment is not supporting their dream Right. So let's touch on tools. Um, mm-hmm. And I've loved, I've 
been fortunate to be a part of a lot of the uh, young entrepreneurs clubs at high schools um, mm-hmm. and you're, you're dealing with teenagers and you love that they have such passion and such, but they come out of school and go, well, wait a minute, how am I supposed to get there? Nobody ever gives them the tools or the, so little things I think that people need to pick up along the way. And some mm-hmm. of these are going to be some harsh realities. Um, but to wake up and be an entrepreneur every day, you need to have, you need to just, um explode with optimism first of all it's key you just it needs to ooze out of you sorry it, it you if you don't have it it's you're not going to get to where you're trying to go you have you need to have so much ambition motivation positivity because it needs to seep into those working with you whether it's your spouse or your your team your employees um it's all about having a good leader and, and to be it you need to to obviously steer the ship in the right direction, but you need to be so full of optimism, such a key word. Um, Nothing's going to stop success. You have to wake up, you get setbacks, you got to chase payments from companies, products or services don't work out the way you want them to. COVID, it doesn't matter what obstacle is thrown at you, you need to believe that you can overcome anything. Um, and, And some tools, I guess, to get through that, keep reading. You're never educated enough to, to succeed in life. Those that think just because they got a bachelor of commerce or they got a degree out of school or they graduate college, you don't have enough tools to get through life. Keep reading and keep motivating yourself. Become an expert in whatever it is you do. Um, if you ever want to achieve more than where you are right now, look around your surroundings. If you're picking up a case of beer and going home and spending four hours in front of Netflix, if it makes you happy, great. There's mm-hmm. your life. But if you have that feeling that there's something more, it's out there. But you need to read the books, attend the seminars. You need to subscribe to Tanya's podcast and, and listen each week or watch this on YouTube to get motivated and, and find out what it needs you need to do to change your life and, and live a fulfilling, you know, experience here through life. So certainly some of the keys always be learning, always be educated. Um, look at who you surround yourself with. If it's not other entrepreneurial, motivated, ambitious, ambitious, successful, whether they're employees or they're entrepreneurs, people around you, I don't know whoever said it, it might have been an Anthony Robbins quote, but you're truly the five people you spend the most time with. If you're not around optimistic, positive, people that support you and want to see the absolute best out of you, you got the wrong team around you and you got the wrong friends, family. And I hate to say it, but you need to cut some of that out. Are you really following family that bring you down on Facebook or other social media or, or friends that are just, you know, when you flip by them and scroll by them, they suck the energy out of you, whatever they're posting. You, you really got to cut yourself off from this. Yeah, that, you know, so well said. I absolutely agree with you. And that can be a tough decision to make, um, you know, and especially if it's like family and you're living with people. <laughs> it's kind of right. hard to disassociate yourself. But you know what? You can, you can, you know, create some new boundaries um, or call people out for some of the negativity. Uh, because sometimes I think people, it's, it's completely oblivious and they don't mean to be, you know, tearing you down, but they tear themselves down. It's a habit and they're used to that. So for them, you know, you may have shared a dream and they don't agree with it, but they don't have to agree with it because it's not their dream. It's your dream, right? right? And they don't feel that they can do it. And so that's what they're sharing. They're not talking about you and your beliefs. You know, it's more about how they would feel if they were in your shoes. And so it's really so, so important to to be able to, to determine like who is going to support you, you know, who is there for you and surround yourself with those people. Join groups. You know, if you look at uh, some of the things and whatever your dream is somebody is probably already doing it right and who has mastered it so learn and you know i cannot get enough from of learning um something that i've learned in my life literally learning again a pun intended is that mm-hmm. you know there's always something to be learned from people every inter interaction is is a moment for for learning um i'm a lifelong learner um, and there was a time when listen i mean i i love personal development i always have since i was like a, a teenager um, and I read so many books. And then when I turned about 30, I was like, I've, I've read so many books. I'm good. Right. And I literally donated my books. You know, I dropped them off at the library. And and then I thought, well, how ridiculous is that? And I even went out and I rebought the same, some of the same books because I'm like, I've never finished learning. And there's, you know, so much to be gained and so much knowledge and wisdom out there. And, you know, that's why I love having conversations like this, Scott, where, you know, people can listen and go, oh my gosh, that's incredible. I just learned something that I didn't know. Um, or you can learn through other people's uh, mistakes, right? Or not even mistakes. I would call them lessons because I don't think 
think there are mistakes, right? It's, it's a lesson. There's a learning opportunity there. And someone else can go through the really hard challenges and you go, wait a minute, I'm going to take these key bits from that. <laughs> right? Yeah, instead of having to do it all yourself. Oh, you're completely right. And to touch on something there, successful people that are truly successful, confident in their own right, they want to pass on what they've learned. They want to pass on their their achievements and failures and describe them to others so that they don't fall into those pitfalls. Mm -hmm. If you get around really successful people confident in what they've done and achieved and not trying to, you know, keep the the secret recipe or the 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 chocolate bar that had that, you know, we'll never give away the secret. Truly successful people want others to be at this level, at this lifestyle, at this happiness, this mm -hmm. freedom. It's not about money necessarily. It's about freedom. Mm -hmm. You're able to choose what you do every day, weekdays, weekends. That's success. The money's important. Pay the bills. No matter mm -hmm. what level you you want boats and cars and, and cottages and, and trips, you need to earn a little bit more. You mm -hmm. just want to pay all the bills and have freedom, freedom to go to every child's soccer game and baseball game freedom to go to the kids play, uh, you know, attend family events or, or enjoy days with friends and golf and, and what, whatever it is that you're after in this life that you're living, it's the, the true success is freedom. Um, and I think too many get caught chasing the money and the dollars. It needs to be there. You need to monetize whatever talent it is you have as an entrepreneur. It's the freedom you're after. Freedom to spend an afternoon in your backyard and just watch the birds. It's, it's it's really important that that's that's first and foremost the goal is the freedom. If you if you watch, we're in Oakville or we're in Ontario, you and I. How many people get on that go train every morning, feeling like they're heading off to prison? Mm -hmm. How many people are in cars and traffic down the QW going downtown that look like they're going to a funeral and they're on their way to work every day, hating what they do? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever done a a survey. I don't know if anybody's ever done a survey worldwide. Well, maybe let's let's stay with North America. How many people love what they do? How many people wake up and go, man, so great to wake up today. I can't wait to get to work. My wife and I put in 12, 14, our desk is off to the left of me. Kelly's not sitting there right now. <laughs> we will put in 12, 14 hour days. We'll put in 12, 14 hours on Sundays. Our son just came back from two weeks at camp. We did not, we had some fun, but we did nothing more than probably put in 12, 14 hour days. We love mm -hmm. the business we're building. We have two. Um, when you love what you do, you, you just, you want to, wake up and do it every morning and if you're somebody out there listening to this who's waking up every morning and hating what you're doing man you need to listen more of tanya's podcast and get the tools and and find out what it is that gets you to what it is you, you're going to love doing for the rest of your life and it's it's the most important thing you can do i think Oh, I love that. You know, thanks for sharing that because I think that's, you know, it really is key um, to have that love because when you are putting in those 12, 14 hour days, you know, and you're still smiling at the end of it, right? And still happy with the people and loving the people around you. That's incredible. Um, I think we all sort of, you know, strive to that. You know, happiness is key um, and feeling unhappy, you know, in, 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 you know, your work life can really translate into your family life and the relationships that you have with everybody around you, you know, and you had touched on how important it is to have those those relationships and sometimes you know we create an environment where we don't allow people to um, you know support us or to be kind because we're just miserable right so I think it's really good to sort of check in with the self um, and and say hold on a second I'm kind of being a little bit you know um, you know down and how do I change that how do I shift that energy you know put on some phenomenal music that you love right pick up a, a the phone and call somebody who you truly love and who supports you and that you feel good talking to you know when you're in a bad mood you know we kind of want um, what do they say misery loves company right so we're gonna just keep on talking about that bad mood and guess what it's gonna get worse <laughs> right but right. when we start to shift that and we can start to see that hey some of these um, actions that we are doing can be shifted personally I think it's really helpful you know I'll just give you an example you know just from my own life the other day which I thought was kind of funny um, I was um, you know setting a timer with Alexa and then I noticed that I was like oh my gosh I'm being kind of a little bit snippy with Alexa <laughs> I was like, because then I was like, timer off. And I'm going, wow, I'm like kind of annoyed that she's like so loud and this timer's buzzing off. And I'm like, but she's doing me a favor. Alexa's being awesome and helping me out. So I'm like, wait a second. It's just there's something inside of me in that moment that I had to shift, right? So I think sure. it's really kind of key to check in in those moments where we need to right. shift.
And don't mess with AI. They're going to take over the world at some point. <laughs> <laughs> don't take off Siri and Alexa. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Oh, it's so funny. I love that. So, you know, I'd love to talk about um, some of the, the mentors that you have had in your life. I know that you have, you know, one mentor in particular with the uh, Dorona Association that you're a part of um, that has really been instrumental in, in you and helping you pursue, you know, the next level of your passion project. Right. Yeah. I mean, you can't become successful without um, those that have either done it before you or those that believe in you or those that I think as people get older, they love passing on knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I have a rule I live by and never turned down a meeting. I almost missed two and it both led to both companies I own right now. We'll talk about one a little bit later. Mm -hmm. um, 2012, I was introduced to a gentleman who uh, most awarded restaurateur ever in Canadian history. Landed in Toronto, 1957, $30 in his pocket, uh, but with incredible experience in the restaurant industry through Australia, when he was interned in a concentration camp as an Italian, mm. uh, there trying to find his father off a boat, landed when the, when the World War started. Mm. Um, trained through Europe and back in Italy and, and in Sweden as well. So landed in Toronto with all this knowledge and ability um, and ended up going on to own Winston's restaurant in downtown Toronto for over 30 years. Um, during that time, received every accolade from the Cavalieri from Italy, from the president who flew over here from Italy mm. and awarded him just like being knighted from England. Um, all these great things. So I met John in 2012. We were hosting an event at our golf club. Um, John came in to talk about, you know, great restaurant tour stories with all the celebrities that came and ate there and, and the titans of industry from around Toronto. Uh, there's exactly 50 years difference between John and I, and we headed off like we were college buddies, uh, immediately headed off with the families to Italy a few months later and became the best of friends. Um, and he became my mentor immediately. John is still with us. John turns 98 this year. Fantastic. Uh, we just finished filming a, an episode of Dolce Vita with David Rocco. Mm -hmm. um, John and I have had nothing but fun, uh, but I've learned an immense amount whether it's the restaurant industry, the wine industry we imported for a little while from Italian wineries, um, but became my mentor who just wanted to share every story of how his businesses became successful. He's owned more than 30 restaurants, I think, in total around Toronto through his career. Um, and he just, he just achieved wonderful things, hard work, obviously, dedication to the industry, perseverance through difficult times. And I, I have this this. You know, great friend who's 50 years older than I am that's a, a wealth of knowledge and, and a pleasure to be around. I absolutely love that. And, you know, really cool that you had, you know, that really strong connection and that you had your mentor. Of course, I'm all about, you know, coaching and mentorship. I think it's so important. But now you are that mentor um, and, you know, a coach for a lot of other people who are now going through that. So I think it's important that we recognize that, you know, you never want to diminish your your what you have to offer other people. You know, I, I know personally too, for me, um, it's sometimes a, it's a sentence that somebody says to you that can impact your entire life. And everybody has a gift, everybody has talents. And it's so beautiful to see that the two of you are able to, you know, bounce off of each other, have fun, enjoy it. And then to, to be an inspiration to others and just to live that life of, um, you know, encouraging and supporting people. Because I think what happens sometimes times is that fear takes over and when fear comes into play then then you start to get into the comparison you compare yourself with other people instead of recognizing that hey everybody's different everybody has their own unique gifts you can have the same um you can be in the same environment the same sort of field right and thrive even though there's another 100 people who are doing the same thing as you so i love that there was no sort of hey competition i can't be friends with this person because they're so successful and what they're going to take away from me kind of thing right that belief completely so keys there some points um get rid of insecurities any jealousy you're never going to be successful in life you're never going to truly love those around you or love yourself you're so built up with anger towards somebody else's success or somebody in the family that's done better than you or man look at the neighbors i get the new car toss it all you said something great a few minutes ago. You took all your books, you know, to the to the bookstore, donated them. So pay it forward. We just moved mm -hmm. Kelly and I from Mississauga to Oakville and looked at shelves after shelving after like bookshelves everywhere. 
all we do is read and humans never get past 10 percent of people that never get past the first chapter of a book we buy them because oh, yeah. but we own the book we must be smarter now because we bought the book <laughs> read the book but yeah. then donate the book why not make others as smart i've got shelves full of gary vaynerchuk mm-hmm. uh, seth godin anthony robbins zig zig i can go on forever jim Rohn, I, the greats love it. donate mm-hmm. them other people need them to grow themselves and yeah jealousy insecurity you're never going to you could become a billionaire but if you don't love yourself and, and get these these issues these cancers out of yourself man you're never gonna have a chance to enjoy this awesome journey of life right yeah i totally agree with you you know it's interesting too you had said something earlier about um someone who had a you know built this billion dollar company right and you were talking about leadership and being a leader um and there's a, a company you may be familiar with them um quest so mm-hmm. right they do like nutrition bars so uh tom billion his wife lisa really kind of built this but in his his journey is incredible um you know going from not having really anything or not obviously not anything specifically but you know what i'm saying just in comparison to building an incredible empire and when he hires people um you know he says to them you know i'm going to teach you everything that i know so that you can build your own billion dollar company and in the same field and so it's like i'm going to show you how to create these nutrition bars so it's not like i'm going to show you some of the tools and tips to create another business in a different field it's like no no in this industry because he wants people to be that successful so i i love that you said that because that sort of marries into his well his whole philosophy right um i love that so we're going to take another break here on the mindset mentor and we'll be back so don't go anywhere because scott briard has more to share with you scott is the ceo um of stock marketing inc He's also the chairman of Girona, and he's built an incredible, incredible business, you know, with his wife and he's helping other people. And in fact, you know, he can um, he's really instrumental now in connecting people, you know, investors and, and, and you know, taking their, their business public and the marketing behind that. So there's a lot of knowledge here to be had. So make sure you come right back here on Saga 960. Hey there, welcome back to The Mindset Mentor. I'm Tanya Kolar, helping you cultivate your best life. And if you're not feeling like your life is going the way you want it to right now, I want you to pay attention um, you know, to, to my special guest today, who is Scott Briard, who is helping us really get into the, the mindset and the mind frame of, of having the confidence and the, the know-how and the motivation to move forward and go after your dreams you know it's so important to keep those dreams alive I know that life can get overwhelming and that we lose ourselves in the process but we're really going to help you to remember who you are I want you to remember the perfection of who you are and so we're going to continue the conversation Scott Briard is the CEO of Stock Marketing Inc he's also the chairman of Dorona Um, he's built an incredible business uh, and his journey has been amazing to see where he is now to see where he started Um, and you know he's helping you kind of make sure that again that you keep that vision alive so Scott we took we took a break um, and I just want to kind of touch on what exactly is is your company like what does stock marketing Inc do because I know when you were 25 you and your wife built an incredible sort of gaming business um, and now you're you've got stock marketing Inc right two completely different things Uh, the success of the retail store hot shots was based on online marketing, e-commerce, social media. We, we built quite a, quite a company. Mm-hmm. Industry took a hit, 08, 09. We pivoted around 2013 into online marketing, which is we'd rather spend more time in the back of the retail store building websites and, and e-commerce and, and blogging. We actually did out dealing with the retail store front. Um, so we pivoted to, to online marketing 2013 until maybe 2018, um, Websites, content, social media, real estate agents, yoga instructors, all these great things that we did. Kelly became a Google photographer and photographed the inside of restaurants and car dealerships. It helped people run up search engines. We knew all the key stuff to online marketing. And I was introduced to a CEO of a gold company here in Oakville, Ontario. Might have been, I guess, maybe the summer of 2016. Like I said earlier, never turned down a meeting because I turned down the first meeting with him. And the person introducing us said, don't turn down the second one. Wow. It's a good thing I didn't. Mm-hmm. Uh, met them and they said, wow, CEO Gold Company, we're evolving into uh, a mineral out of Botswana called manganese. It's going to be needed for electric 
car batteries. I knew nothing of what they were talking about, but I knew they had a terrible website. They had no social media. How are you going to attract investors without these things? Mm -hmm. And we kind of 10 years difference in us, another mentor, he came on and kind of said, I'd love to teach you all about public companies and investing. You make sure my company cleans itself up and looks good online. Uh, I became a director of the company, the mining company for two and a half years. So I learned governance, compliance, board meetings, AGMs, all those key things that I needed. And I had no university education or background in, picked all that pr up pretty quickly. And when you're dealing with junior mining companies, junior cannabis, tech, blockchain, crypto, doesn't matter what sector it is, uh, TSX ventures, CSC stock exchanges, um, they're small. And they're usually, you know, individuals like you and I with a dream and they build a company and then they go public. Um, they know how to market their product and service, but not all mm. of them know how to market to investors. Mm -hmm. And I quickly realized that opportunity in 2016. Um, Kelly and it also just purchased another business at the time, which is Jerona, as you mentioned a few times. We can touch on that maybe in a minute. Stock marketing involved quickly. 6,000 public companies in Canada, 20,000 wow. in the United States. We're not talking Tesla and Rogers. We're talking Bob's Yukon gold exploration kind of thing. Maybe Bob didn't have a website or social media or e-commerce or not e-commerce, but uh, email distribution and, and all these key things that public companies need. We saw the void immediately, like I did in 1999 for retail uh, in that industry. And Kelly and I just jumped on it um, and exploded when so many suffered in the beginning of COVID and we actually wondered Kelly and I, what was going to happen with our industry. Mm -hmm. Second business being in the restaurant industry, uh, our marketing business exploded because there was no conferences, lunch and learns, road shows, no opportunities for investors to spend with the CEO of these public companies. But on came us with great websites, social media and video interviews. Wow. We connected the two immediately and we were able to really grow through through that period. Fantastic. So that's, that's stock marketing. Yeah. yeah, that's fantastic. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's, the marketing, you know, is so key with any business, you know, even down to simply the name, right, can can make or break a business. I mean, you talked about your business, you know, Hot Shots. I mean, how catchy is that, right? right. Um, yeah, it's so, so really cool. Um, but yeah, it's so important. And, you know, reach out to the professionals to get the help and the support that you need. You know, there's so many uh, resources and tools available right there at your fingertips. You know, if you're not in a position where you can, you know, hire people, People, then look it up. I mean, source it out. Listen and read books to other people's experiences and how they did it. Um, you know, and if you want to reach out to the professionals, again, do it. And you know, on that note, how can how can um, you know the the listeners or the viewers find find you if you can help people out who need that you know extra boost? Me, I am here yeah. for anybody at any time. So oh. much so that if you get to stockmarketing.ca forward mm -hmm. slash Scott. You can actually pick my brain for 20 minutes. So there's a calendar of mine on there through Calendly, mm -hmm. connects a Zoom call. Um, and whether it's those looking to hire our services through stock marketing, I would love to take anybody listening to this that would like more uh, motivation, more uh, secret sauce that I may have, or, or just some inspiration or thoughts I have for their business ideas or such. I'm happy to talk to anybody at any time. I don't turn down any meeting from anybody anymore. Um, yeah, so if anybody wants to pick my brain for 20 minutes at uh, stockmarketing.ca forward slash Scott, they can get to me there. I love it. Paying it forward. There you yeah. go. You know, and I love the idea that you just don't turn down, you know, those opportunities, you know, those meetings when they present themselves, um, because you, you just never know where that's going to take you. And if it shows up, there's a reason it's showing up, right? So, so what's really important is also to, to take action. Remember that the universe rewards action. And when we stay inactive, I mean, that's because we've got a lot of the fear and the doubt and we're, we're afraid of rejection and or sometimes we're afraid of success right but i think it's so important remember just take action any small action you know schedule a 20 minute conversation on calendly with scott right take that kind of an action or you know again reach out to to someone who is in the field that you that you want and pick their brain uh you know read a book get online do some research you know get into a car drive in the area that you want to live in do something right to take action to to really foster your 
your dream life and, you know, to find that joy. I think that's so key. So we have just a few minutes left, Scott. So uh, if we could quickly touch on uh, Dorona, that's a little bit more of Kelly and your sort of passion project, right? Because you guys love the food industry. <laughs> we do. Mm. We certainly do. Um, my mentor uh, back in 1990 with the leading restaurant owners across North America launched a fine dining award well before open table and all the online mm-hmm. vote for my restaurant sort of things popped up. Uh, originally, it began in 1953 as the Travel Holiday Award in a magazine, uh, peer review. They voted themselves as top fine dining establishments. It was rebranded in 1990 as the Distinguished Restaurants in North America, uh, built themselves up just over 600 restaurants, fine dining awards, conferences, philanthropy, uh, I think Kelly and I managed just over a $350,000 US dollar endowment. We give away seven scholarships each year to students I Canada and the US, mm-hmm. wine trips and, and culinary tours. Um, so we purchased it back in 2016. It was a nonprofit out of the US. Um, they lost a little bit of their direction. Uh, it was proposed to us to become directors. And I said, I can't work for a nonprofit. I just, I'm, I'm going to love it. I'm going to build it. And I don't want to be voted out after some board decides to go a different direction, but I'd be happy to buy it from you. So we purchased it in 2016, met some wonderful people, some great restaurant organizations across the U.S. and Canada. We expanded it so far that we took it down into um, Mexico, across the Caribbean as well, to great restaurants that deserve the recognition. These are family-owned restaurants and achieved years or decades of success. Um, it's nice that we get a fine dining award on the wall and, and the ability to communicate and, and attend events with other great restaurateurs as well. So that's kind of our passion project. Will it lead to a TV show one day where we go around and award restaurants and taste? And I don't know what it'll lead to at some point, but uh, we love doing it. We love staying in touch with the restaurant tours. And, uh, and most importantly, it gives me a chance to work with John Arena as well each year to, uh, to make sure we carry on his great, uh, his great succession. So, oh, beautiful. I love that. That's so cool. And, and I love that you're already thinking about, okay, well, I don't know what will be next, but there will be something next, right? right. Because I think we can get so lo- locked into, oh, this is, you know, when I reach this, then my life is done. I don't have to work any harder. I don't have to do anything else, but we're always evolving and moving. So it's really nice to know that, hey, you know, there is always something next that we can look forward to. And we don't have to know everything right away. You know, it will be revealed to us along our journey and unfortunately we are out of time so scott i want to say thank you so much for being on the Men- the mindset mentor today and sharing your wealth of knowledge and just being open to helping other people you are an inspiration and you know please continue doing the incredible work that you are doing as well as your wife you guys are a great team and, and again thank you so much for being here today well thank you for having me it's it's been an absolute pleasure Wonderful. All right, everyone. So that is a wrap for today's The Mindset Mentor. And make sure you tune in uh, next Thursday at 3 p.m. to get some more tips on helping you live your best life. And remember that you were meant to live an extraordinary life. Go get it.